disappearing and fading into the past for though it looks like a lot of things are doom and gloom right now God has not abandoned his church he has not abandoned his people Israel and he has not abandoned you or your family so you need to stand up and begin to prophesy right now we win we win God is not defeated and to say it's hopeless is to say God is helpless and he's far from being helpless. I'm telling you, all he has to do is take his fist, hit the sand, and it flies everywhere. For he set the Mideast Mid -East ablaze. This is the days of victory. The days that we win. Hallelujah. For a revival has been ignited. It's burning across every land and there is nothing out of hell can stop it nothing from the hand of a man 
well, this is the time of victory, the time we win. So let's go and win big. Hallelujah. Come on and shout out loud. I win. We win. We win. Say it. strength and your power. Lord, let the prophetic word be strong today on the stage of the 11th hour. Hallelujah. For though the enemy thought he had everything where he wanted, he failed miserably. And men are taking credit for things right now that God has done in this war against tyranny. God is the one knock down the missiles and the blazes over Israel that night. Not a man. They couldn't even catch it in their sights. But guidance systems failed and accuracy prevailed for the God of Jacob rose to the forefront that night. And know this Israel, God will never leave you. He will win your fight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I saw this. I saw the Lord had his thumb on the scale. This thing, whatever comes against the nation of Israel will fail. And those need to take heed, those that are leaders today and all these nations trying to manipulate Israel. All those leaders trying to push them in a position this way and that way, you'll not be leaders tomorrow. Or things are going to change rapidly in the world. And where you laughing and joyful over your control of Israel will turn to sorrow. God is the God of that land. And He is the God that created everything. Everything in that sand. And know this, no sand dragons, Nothing else that rises up in that region of the world will prevail against God. For today, 
For today, we proclaim God is God. There is no other. God is God. There is no other. None but He. I said God is God. There is no other but He. delivering your people. Lord, I thank you for delivering not just Israel, but all the, your people around the world. Lord, this is enough. It has run its course. And now, jackals and people that are pushing for false wars and false things in the earth. Lord, it's time they meet their demise. They meet their end. Lord, that this thing runs its course and stops now. Lord, revival awaits us. And we win. We win. We win again. Yeah, that I can. 
can hear what's being said. There's a conversation I'm hearing. It sounds like an AM radio off in the distance, but it's definitely a man talking. More, there's a conversation happening. Come on and let's lift our voices and praise a moment. And lift your heart to God. Something is being discussed. to make that out. But we must pray now for vegetation to be spared. I saw food and crops in protected areas. A conversation talking about some different things today and he all kinds of things just things that are happening we're in a time of mystery we're in a time of of transition of things history's being turned and history's being made right now and some of the conversations can't be can't be told but history's about ready to turn you're you're not in the time of of the wars that people think we're in 
prophetic wars. It is prophetic wars, but the Lord says more of a battle. But we're not in the times that people would like to push into play just to sell books. This is a time of history being turned. It's going to be turned. And the Lord has a lot to say about that. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's just play this one more time and we're going to see where we go from here. Prophecies this morning. I sent just I sent to John three this morning. The first two is all right. We can play those, not the last one I sent. But play, go ahead and go to it. Let's just keep playing, and we're just going to drift off to that and come back. Come on, if you can do that, go ahead and do it now. Just fade this out and kind of go to that and come back. Let's do things different today. Let's just follow God on this thing. Hallelujah. A war, a war, battle, for hell beneath is stirred up to greet thee at thy coming. 
leave them alone. There's a lot of fire in the Mideast. And it runs along the ground to burn. Already now it's kindled since the Lord. I'm telling you, nations to turn. Leave Abraham alone. For the answer is his to life. Listen close in the West Bank. Side to Israel. We call for hidden armies, armies to protect them, to protect Israel. Israel, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we breathe the breath of prophecy from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We say, Live. sound, Lord, of the rumbling. Let Israel's enemies hear the sound of the rumbling in the ground. And they realize they are coming against a foe they have no might to defeat. Lord, breathe across the nation of Israel again. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Well, today is a very unusual day, and um, on a prophetic program, things are not just cut and dried the way people think. You can't just do things because you set them in a script. Prophecy is, when prophecy goes out, it sends a blueprint to the creation of what God wants to build in the earth. It's, it carries within it. It's diagrams and blueprints for the whole of creation to line up toward that prophecy. And, and when people prophesy, they'll give prophetic words out like that. And there's a lot of unfinished buildings in the world because people will abandon their prophecy before. Now, I want to tell you something. And, I'm, and you know, everybody here knows what, we're, what we've done today. Uh, the world would say, well, you know, you're just... This is just, it's totally unscripted. Welcome to the 11th hour. It is unscripted. And we're liable to do something that, and I'm hearing today, I'm, I'm, I'm caught between what I can say, what I can't say. I heard a conversation a minute ago. I could hear them talking. I just wasn't allowed to understand it. And then someone was singing, and something is happening. See, when prophecy goes out, prophecy is something the enemy cannot, he cannot even comprehend. All he knows is the power of the prophecy because he was a prophetic cherub before he fell. And so he understands the power of prophecy, 
And it scares him to no end. But he, he, he can't. He don't know what to do about it. He just knows this, that remember when, when before Lucifer fell, when he was Lucifer, he would take the prophetic word he would find in the stones of fire, put them in his being. He'd lift himself up because of his beauty into the, the atmosphere and sing out across the creation the revelation he found in the stones of fire. And the, the, the ephod he wore would light up and the bezels, the hollow tubing that held those things was hollow and would sound like wind instruments. And harps were in him and timbrels were built in him. And he would sing a prophetic word and it would hit the crystalline canopy, carry it around the earth. And before there was even a man the blueprint of what God was doing in those revelations would go into the creation and it will show you just how powerful prophet, prophetic utterances are before there was any hindrance to it at all. When it was in a perfect setting, the very stones themselves that built the cities of Jeremiah 4 would just form themselves and smooth themselves out of rock and build the cities. And on their own, it would have looked like. But it was the power of the prophetic word drawing the blueprint for the creation to move and the sound would move it around. And Satan knows this. And so when prophecy starts coming out, it sends a prophetic blueprint out. And the creation, that's why it groans in travail wanting the sons of God to be revealed to it. But it says it groans in travail together because it's all part of working in this thing. And Satan knows the power of it. That's why he stopped so many prophets when they came out. When prophecy suddenly came out on all the prophetic programs, all the prophetic voices, uh, uh, voice after voice after voice, and then suddenly when things didn't happen the way the world thought it should have happened and the ch church judged the prophets, and slammed them down, prophets begin to back up and apologize, apologize, apologize. And all those blueprints that they had released out of their mouth were left standing like unfinished buildings. They're just hanging out there, unfinished. It's like in Jeremiah 4, when he said, and there was mountains and they moved lightly and the hills moved lightly and there were birds and the fruitful places became a wilderness and there were cities but there were no man it was left unfinished and when lucifer ushered that brought in that flood on the first world it destroyed everything in it everything perished these are the blueprints that have been released by prophets who apologized. They're still out there, but only half of it began to happen. And now the Lord is releasing more prophetic words, but we're being wiser with them. And what I mean by that is you release them strategically in this moment. The prophecies that were given before the election are true it all was true. It did happen and heaven still has the same plan. It's the church. Well, God is in control. You know that's a bunch of hooey and you know it as well as I know it. Because if God was in control, he would have shut your loud mouth to start with before you ran everybody in the world down. But he didn't. Because you are in control of you. We've got to get this out of our thinking. God is in control where God is put in control. And if a prophetic word won't be turned loose of or backed off of, it will come. It will come to pass if you don't back away from it. Isaiah, I'm sure he caught flack over a virgin will conceive. A virgin will conceive. Oh, well, that was Isaiah. But you say that after looking in the scripture and knowing Jesus has come. But a thousand years before it happened, would you have thought he was crazy? 
Well, sure you would have. You would have if you think the prophets now are crazy. Prophets saying, Trump won, Trump won. Well, my God, he didn't go into office. They didn't say he went into office, said he won. That ought to tell you something. Prophecy sends a blueprint to the creation. And the creation starts arranging itself to come to pass. But once that prophecy, Paul told Timothy, war with the prophecy you were given. War with it. Fight with it. Hold fast your confession of faith of that revelation. A revelation from God is the breath of prophecy. It's coming out of his thinking that no one else really gets it at the moment. It's like the saying you've heard me say before, a prophet is sitting in, a, in the middle of a congregation and he's sitting on the front row and the congregation's laughing, having a good time and you look down and the, the, the old prophet's crying. I said, why are you crying, prophet? He said, because I see what's coming. Well, you know, there's, everything's, everything's, you know, everything's chicken. And then suddenly it turns. And then everybody's crying, but the prophet's laughing. Why are you laughing, prophet? Because I see what's coming. When the prophecies were given for what you saw in the war, the spiritual war of 2020, when those, all the prophecies were given, God gave a blueprint to the creation and all of creation to begin to move toward those prophecies. And then when Satan figured, I have to stop this because it'll smooth the stones, it'll build the structures, it'll do everything needed to make it come to pass. So the only way he knew to do it was shame the prophets. Shame them and tell them, back away, apologize. Apologize for the prophecies you gave that wasn't true. Who the hell are you to say it wasn't true? That wasn't true? Would you have told Isaiah his wasn't true? Well, no, that's Isaiah. But a thousand years before the fact or however long, you're the very people, you're the very dudes that would have said that ain't true. But it was true. And you built your whole life on the fact that prophecy happened. Why would you abandon the Isaiahs of today? Why would you abandon all of them now? The Ezekiels. Man, all the prophets are gone. Well, I guess all the pastors are gone too. And all the teachers are gone too. And all the apostles are gone too, huh? I guess they're all gone. If the prophets are gone, then the, then the rest of the fivefold's gone. I guess they're all gone too, right? Oh, no, they can't be gone because you're one of those. But you don't know about a prophet. Evangelists thinking they're prophets. Pastors thinking they can tell them what to do. Seems like only the apostles are the only ones that don't come out against them because nobody believes in them either. Now, that was a lot of righteous indignation, I guess, for a while. But I'm going to tell you this. The prophecies that have come out are absolutely blueprints. And if you won't back off of it, there is no force in, it, in earth or hell that could stop it. It will happen. It will happen. Mordecai told Esther, said you were brought, how do you know if you wasn't brought to the kingdom for such a time as this, but if you don't hold your confession and say it, he didn't say it wouldn't happen. He said God will raise up deliverance from another place, but you won't be saved. How many prophets prophesied the truth and now you've backed off and you've backed away from it and you've apologized. How does anybody believe anything else you're saying? 
you either heard God or you didn't. I believe you did. I believe you heard him. I, I knew you heard him when I heard you say it. All the prophets that just stopped. Hold fast your confession. This is what I heard the Lord say this morning concerning Israel and concerning, yes. He said, battle worn and weary, says the Lord. But do not change leaders if you expect to win this war. He said, you're battle worn and weary, says the Lord, but do not change leaders if you expect to win this war. He said, Netanyahu is my lion, my David for this time. And it is he that I have, I have ordained to get you across the red line. For a second war has started and a third yet to come, but not like the first two. The third will be a dumb, will be dumb. Dumb? Yes, dumb. Not much will be said because if it's not a dumb war, too many will be dead. Things are happening right now. In America, Israel, and Russia, I heard these words. I gave you my chosen leaders back. I gave you my chosen leaders back. The ones who would win for you. The ones who have your back. Now you seek to remove them. What do you think stands in the wings to take their place? The Lord said it would be devastating. And then again, he said, devastating twice, says the Lord. So we, we have to begin to embrace the supernatural right now. We have to stop and think that this is, he's still the God of the Bible, the Old Testament that defeated Pharaoh, that, that put down giants and put down kings and raised up kings. He's still the same God and he's still using his prophets. But according to history, how did Manasseh pay back Isaiah? Kings can get so turned. They can get so into a wicked place that Manasseh even offered his own child in human sacrifice. And he was wicked, wicked, just kept moving, moving, moving toward wickedness. And it's said in history that he's the one that sawed Isaiah in half in a log, a hollow tree. How true that is, we don't know, but that's what's said. But we know this. In Hebrews, it said some were sawn asunder. Some were thrown to lions. All because prophets are speaking and the blueprint of the creation certain kings don't like. So we have to begin to, we have to hold fast this thing. The prophecies you saw, the prophecies that you saw earlier that we showed, those are still true. Well, that prophecy we showed Sunday, birds of prey, have we showed that? Do we have that back there we can show? I come in and I come in on the eleventh hour and I throw things at the media. I, I do. I just throw them at them, and they're not ready for them because how how can you be? And so that's why all of this is just happening as you see it unfolding. But if we have it ready, if somebody would just let me know, okay. I'll, uh, and the little the little clip we showed behind it. Ask Katie that. And go ahead and show that. Show the birds of prey prophecy and then what happened behind it, you know, that we showed of what took place. We prophesy every bird of prey that will come against the 
this nation, every bird of prey launched from the caves down under, launched from the caves that are hidden, the birds of prey that attack Israel. We order you to burst into flames and stop. We call you down in destruction from your sky high and lifted lofty place. There's only one place for high places in this nation, and that is for the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And we call every bird of prey that would attack Israel to fall from the sky, fall down into a place. And we call, we call for the birds of prey to explode in their caves and explode in the places where they are manufacturing birds of prey for guidance systems to fail, for guidance systems to fail. And Lord God, number the troops and number the defense of Israel so many more than they are. Number them, Lord, and let their enemies hear thousands more. Let their enemies hear the angelic host and the army that's actually marching with them to stand with them. And Lord God, I ask you to show the naysayers, Lord God, in this, in this prophetic time that there are more with us and more with Israel than there are with their enemies. We speak Babel, Babel over the enemies of Israel. Babel, confusion their communications. Russia, back up. Russia, you didn't want this anyway. Back your ass back and stay away for you didn't want this anyway. Heed this call and the Lord says you'll be blessed. Pursue the nation of Israel will fail the test for I will fight for them and in the night you'll see my eyes hear me China for you are not who you think you are hear me dragon eyes for I will pull you down to the ground leave Israel alone شباب هلا بدون صوت birds of prey exploding in the air. That's what you were watching. And that prophecy called for them to burst into flames. There was 350 missiles and drones fired at Israel that night. All of them unleashed. Some of them were delayed for hours getting there. And the Lord said in one prophecy, I'll blow and a headwind will hold them back. And what do you think exploded that? It's unprecedented. People say, well, look at the great military prowess and all of that. Well, it might have been some military expertise, but you don't destroy 99% 
of the birds of prey, and there were ballistic missiles reported flying over the Temple Mount, and they were shot out of the sky. They exploded. And so you, you say, well, that's military expertise. Really? That all of them, but 1%, all but 1% of it, and it hit the ground, injured one person. And yet in one night, 350 birds of prey were shot down or exploded in the sky. Where did that come from? The prophetic blueprint that was released from Carmel. There was a lot of believers up there. There were other prophets up there. There were people there with the Elijah streams and, and the 11th hour and, and, and from Church International, we were all there to prophesy on certain places. Did you hear the word about Russia back up? Russia, back your ass up? Well, that word ass there was used in a strategic thing. It's a mystery that I can't tell now. But it was used in a strategic prophetic word. And now, we, I heard a report today that Russia has moved a warship in. But at the time of the exploding birds of prey, he said, back up and leave Israel alone. There's a lot more prophecies out there that have been released and by different prophets in different times. But these, I can't speak for other prophets. All I can speak for is this, this ministry. And when the blueprint has been released, the very stars in the air and everything around it has started building that plan to explode the birds of prey. And hidden armies come forth to fight for Israel like you saw in the other prophecies. Different things. Prophecy is that powerful. When it comes out, Isaiah, the virgin will conceive. The government will be on his shoulder and, and, and so forth. And on and on and on he prophesied. He prophesied where he would be born, where it would happen, what, how it would be. And it set that blueprint out and nothing could stop it. The creation kept moving toward that direction. And prophecy stopped that you saw. The prophetic utterance of the word. So we have to begin to take, to take confidence in what we're saying in our prophecies. Prophets don't just prophesy to sell a book. And don't just prophesy to make your name known. Most do not. But prophesy what God gives you even if you think that it's not being heard. But creation hears it. All creation is listening. I don't know. I think the first two prophecies they showed had a wind sound in it. It's a prophetic word in the wind. And it just keeps coming out. And you know when Elijah was running from Jezebel and he told the Lord, the Lord, listen what the Lord asked him. He ran from his biggest critic. He ran. He, wasn't, he probably wasn't so much just afraid as, as he might have been, but it was also depression. We know that because he was sleeping under a juniper tree. He just, he prayed to die. He said, I'm no better than my father's. And the Lord asked him when he got to the cave where, where the cleft of the rock that Moses had been put in, when he got to that certain place, the Lord said, Elijah, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Why did you come here? He said, Lord, I'm the only one left that's zealous for you. And the Lord said, Elijah, I've got 7,000 that hasn't bowed their knee to Baal. In other words, they've been prophesying the whole time. They're standing believing with you. You just don't see them. And then the Lord told Elijah this. He said, go back the way you came. Go back. Yeah, 
For you have prayed to be beyond your ears, years, for now you're standing in it, says the Lord. For you be prayed to be beyond your ears, and now you're standing in the day that you are. For men look, and it's a blur, but you're standing where you've prayed, says the Lord. You are standing beyond your years where you prayed to be, and now you're here. You know, I heard something when he was giving that message out in tongues, that today we're prophesying between times. We're prophesying between lines. There's so much you can say, so much you can't say. So what's between the lines is being talked about today on this program until the rest of it can be seen in the open. We're talking about something between the lines. Elijah went back the way he came. That's when he picked up Elisha and so on and so forth. But notice this, and the Lord is saying things. He's, he's talking about these things today. Let me get back to something here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says in 1 Kings chapter 19, in verse 11, this is when Elijah had, well, verse 9, we'll start there. And he came thither unto the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Why are you here? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of, of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, and the Lord was not in, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Again the Lord asked him, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abimahola shall be shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it came to and it shall come to pass uh, that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. So he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shaphat. Now Notice he said this. He said, go return on thy way. 
This is what the Lord would say to the prophets that have apologized. Go return on your way. Go back. Go back. Go back and begin to prophesy again. Hold fast to what God gave you. Go back. This is the time. Your house, the blueprint that you prophesied is left unbuilded. It's just part of a building standing out there in the spirit. Go back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're prophesying between the times. We're prophesying between the lines today. We're prophesying in this way. And you need to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So this thing, yes, I will. Now, I want us to go to St. John chapter 3 for a few moments. And how this is going to fit in with this, I don't have any clue. But the Lord said to go here, so he, he gave this to me, I don't know, maybe it was 3 o'clock this morning. And uh, St. John chapter 3, everybody knows that, they know that prophecy, I mean that uh, scripture, especially verse 16. But I want you to see this. And we're going to look at the first two verses, and this is really different. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, I want you to notice this. A Christian life of power, when power starts showing up, it has a way of drawing people out of religion. Once you have a, a, a life that you're living where miracles are happening and the power of God is showing up, it has a way of drawing people out of a religious group. There's always some, Nicodemus said, we know. There was a few that knew. And he came to Jesus. Why did he come at night? Well, because the light was out there in the dark and he made his way from that darkness of religion right to the light and came to the light of the world and asked a question. So a, a life of power, he said, we know this because the miracles you do, only you could have come from God to do these kind of miracles. A life of power in the Holy Ghost draws people out of dark religion. It brings them out. And so we have to be, and, your, and prophecy, and explosive power of prophecy, like the birds of prey you just saw. People can, they, they try to write that off. Well, you know, that's just not, um, that's not really supernatural. Really? Really? The Lord said birds of prey, birds of prey burst into flames. And it did it. Said, Russia, back up. They have a warship and a flag on the Syrian border. Back up, he said. Man, that was way before this stuff started. They tell me it's almost exactly a year. It was prophesied. There's more prophecies that I just can't show right now because they're very strategic. But people say things, you know, and then they say, oh, that was just military prowess. Really, 350 birds of prey shot down? That's like taking a bullet, firing a bunch of them up in the air, and you standing with a rifle on the ground and shooting every bullet. Only God could have done that. But people keep waiting for some real, they say, oh, a real miraculous sign. Remember when the eclipse happened and all this stuff was happening at the same time. Well, that's not miraculous, they said, because it's a, it's a, a real occurrence. Well, what do you do with a scripture that says that he gave the sun, the moon, the stars for signs and signals? What are you looking for? 
What kind of sign are you looking for? But when you start showing power and a Christian life starts exhibiting the power of God, there is a whole religious system out there that's gaslighted everyone in it. Did you know that religion, it becomes a point of control that appeals, it appeals to the... Uh, to the place of ye shall be as gods. You say, how is that? Well, because it's a place where your salvation and everything you do all depends on what you do and the work of your hands. It's based on what you do and what you don't do. Works of good, uh, are necessary. Works are good and they're necessary, but it has to be coupled with faith or it's just religion. A religion of judgment where you judge others by your ideas. And I'm going to tell you the sad thing about it is, is that religion becomes such, a, a, it becomes a place, a deceiving point that it blinds people from their actual actions and makes them believe that they are living, that they are living their intentions. Religion makes people, act, it becomes such a deception of rules and regulations. There's so many people strangled by their denominations right now that they are absolutely into the place of it's got to be this way and no other way until the point, and religion gets mean it's like those that Jesus talked to. It's like those when John the Baptist called them a brood of vipers. Why is that? Because they, remember Jesus said, do what they tell you to do, but don't do as they do. Because they, remember one time he said, they search and scour the countryside until they find, make one proselyte and make him twice the child of hell than they are. Because this religion deceives people into thinking that they are actually living their intentions. I don't know if you catch that or not, but they actually think they're living their intentions. See, religion judges you by your actions, but judges itself by its good intentions. Well, I meant to do that, and I meant to do that, and when it gets dangerous is when you think you're doing what you intended to do. And all you are is just mean. And so Nicodemus and several others noticed in that dark circle that a light showed up over there. Miracles started happening. The, the miracles of the God of their fathers and they started saying, man, how can he be wicked? How can he be evil? He's got to be a teacher sent from God because nobody can do that without God sent them, without God's with them. So he made his way through the night to find the light. And I believe that's what prophecy is right now. It's a light being shined in darkness and letting people know that God has not forgotten them. It takes explosive miracle working power to wake people out of it. It takes explosive miracle working power to do it. It drew Nicodemus to the light in the middle of the night. So this is what the enemy tries to do to stop you and I. But we have to begin to prophesy more boldly than ever. We have to start talking about things. We have to start the words the prophets brought. Have you not noticed, people, okay, prophets prophesied uh, Trump would win the election. Have you never noticed that has never went away? Have you ever noticed that? There's still a big fight over that. They try to put the man in jail for saying it. They just won't quit. I mean, it won't go away. It's because the creation got the blueprint of all the voices of the prophetic. And creation won't turn it loose. It just won't turn it loose. And so we have to 
We have to understand these things. We have to start speaking. We have to start talking. We have to keep, we have to show up power in our, if I was in a denominational church and I belonged to a denomination, the minute they told me explosive power couldn't happen in there, I wouldn't be a part of that no more. I just wouldn't be a part of that anymore because it's just a fossilized thought that won't let you go any farther. Hallelujah. Well, this all was a totally unplanned, wasn't it, today? Had no plans on any of this. Heard a, heard a tune, played a little of that, showed a couple prophecies, and then the Lord had a whole message. So we're prophesying today between the lines. Now what you see happen in the next weeks to come around the world, do not be alarmed. Do not think that Israel will lose because they will not. They will not lose. God brought an end when it began. And the birds of prey exploding shows that. That's just one prophecy. That's just a clip of a prophecy. Do you know how many prophecies are out there? And people declaring them. The creation has a blueprint. But I want to tell you something. It's gone too far. The, the blueprint has been grabbed hold of by the creation. And it will not turn it loose. It sank itself into it deep now. And it is moving toward that direction. There will be a billion soul harvest come into the kingdom. It will happen. It will happen and nothing can stop it from happening. There's prophecies we'll bring out in the future that, I don't know, maybe, but you have to release them as the Lord tells you. And so, but what he says in the darkness, you preach from the housetop. Hallelujah. Well, I, right now, I don't, I don't know if I have anything else I need to say. Um, except if you don't know Jesus as your Lord. Why don't you go ahead and accept him as Lord? You're living in a great prophetic time, a time of the rushing mighty wind. You're living in a time that was prophesied by prophets of old. You're living in a time that no one else has seen before and lived in but you. So why don't you make Jesus the Lord of your life? Because he's your Savior. And if that has anything to do, if there's anything in your life to do with saving, then he's in charge of that if you make him Lord. Then he's obligated to save you because he's your Lord. And so if you're in a war-torn country, he's obligated to save you because he's your Savior. You know, I remember um, hearing uh, my sister tell a story. I don't know where she, she had been, she was listening to someone that this happened to, I think. I, I reckon. But they were in, in the Mideast in a part of, uh, like a part of a, a city. I forget exactly where it was now. But it was, it was war-torn. And, and they were terrorists and, and, um, and radicals chasing them. And these were Christians, and they were chasing them, and they were running down around these buildings. And they came up on this one building, and uh, they went into it, and there was a man standing there. He was at the door. He had on a, 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 like a tuxedo and like a waiter, a maitre d', and had a towel on his arm. And he told them, come in. He said, come on in. They went in, they closed the door, and there was a nice table set there. And they, it was like a restaurant, and he, they set them down, and they ordered their meal. They're just looking and wondering about all this stuff. And they sat there and ate and had a wonderful time, just as peace. And then when they, they got through, they left, and they made it back safe and so forth. And then they were telling somebody. They said, what happened? They said, well, we went down the street and we went into this restaurant. This maitre d' invited us in. And said, he set us at this table. We ate and we had a great time. And all of this just passed by us. They said, where was it? And they told him, they said, there's no restaurant there. There's nothing like that there. 
This is in the middle of almost a war zone. This is not, this is, there's nothing like that there. And sure enough, it wasn't there. But it was that day because the Savior saved them. And so you want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life so that way if you need saving, you can call on him and say, you're my Savior, save me. And he will. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. How do I do that? Well, Paul said you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that he's your Lord and you'll be saved. So why don't you do that right now? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. Come in my heart, live forever. Forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me of a sin consciousness. I will live for you forever. Now, if you meant that, that he has come. And now he's in charge of your salvation. He's in charge of saving you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, come on, Krista, whoever is coming, and we will. Whatever the Lord is telling you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I was just talking with Amber you know, my, my youngest niece, Morgan, uh, Amber's youngest daughter, when she was, uh, I ran across the video just the other day. I don't know, Morgan might have been, she might have been three or, or four, and she decided that she was going to become an evil villain in the car and steal my sunglasses. And she had my sunglasses hostage. She had my Bible hostage. She had all these things. And I said, why? why are you doing this to me? I said, why, why are you being, she said, number one, she said, because I am mean. <laughs> that was the, that was the number one reason, <laughs> three or four, because I am mean. And I said, well, can you give me a, a reason? And she said, I take away your stuff. I take away and they're mine forever. And I always think about that when the enemy comes in and it, he makes it very obvious that he's trying to steal your stuff. You know, he's never subtle about it. The enemy is never, there's nothing he actually does that's really subtle. He, he just comes in and if you, if you were to ask him, why are you doing this? Well, because I'm mean. Because I mean, because he, that's what he comes to do, to steal, kill, and destroy. And he comes in and he, he tries to take your stuff. He tries to steal it, you know. And, and then, but we have to come to a point, and every time I recognize it, when the enemy, and sometimes we get distracted. We get distracted with everyday life. We get distracted with just normal things. It doesn't have to be anything massive. You just get distracted with living life in general. But when you realize it, I, I always say, I take away your stuff. <laughs> I take away and they're mine forever. That's the way we've got to be as the body. When he comes in, you can't let him take away your stuff. And you notice she had my Bible. He comes to steal the word. Now, Morgan's not the devil. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Morgan's not the devil, but she was playing an evil villain. She actually said it. it was, she told me that she was going to snap her fingers and I was going to be a chicken. <laughs> she said, I snap my fingers and you will be a chicken. And I said, okay. She said, and you have to wear the tiny pink shoes. The tiny pink shoes. And then I asked her, and she said, she told me at one point I've got to get out of the car. And I said, well, I said, you want me to, you're kicking me out of my own car. She said, yes, get out. And I said, well, where am I going? She said, to the sliding frog pool. And I said, where's the sliding frog pool? We have to have Morgan's attitude towards the enemy. No, you kick him out of your car. 
not the other way around. But see, that's the devil with Christians. He makes you think that you've got to get out of your own call. Your car is your vessel. That's, that's what you're moving in. He makes us believe that we have to get out of our own car. And then you say, well, where am I going to go? And he goes to the sliding frog pool. No, you've got to send him to the sliding frog pool. And then when the pool and the portal came out and I saw the cover for the first time, I said, there it is. I was like, that is the sliding frog pool right there. And that's where he belongs. And it's time we look at him and we say, no, I take away your stuff. Because it's not your stuff, it's mine. You stole it from me. You stole it from me and now you're caught. I'm going to tell you something. The devil has so much to pay me and my family back for. It ain't even funny. Why? Because we called him. We called him and we, he wasn't subtle about it. I can promise you that. He wasn't subtle about it. He made it a point and he declared war. So guess what? I'm ready to fight you, buddy. And I'm ready to take it back. And that's where we have to be. The, the, world is not, the world is not subtle about it. The world's not subtle about coming in and taking your stuff. If they want to come in and take your stuff, guess what? They're, they'll do it. And they don't care if they hurt you. They don't care if they offend you. They don't care who you are. They don't care who you are at all. And the enemy definitely, he don't care. He doesn't care at all. He don't care, and the, the more powerful that you are as a believer, the bigger target you got on your back for him. But the bigger you are, the more powerful of a believer, how do you become that? Is there a difference? Can there be a more powerful believer? Absolutely. But the same power is available for all believers. It's just up to how much you spend in this book right here. That the word comes out of your mouth and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And so today, it's time we get some backbone about us in the body of Christ. We've got to do it today. This Bible cover right here says, Stand firm and let nothing move you. Nothing. It didn't say, um, you can let this, this is an exception. There's no exceptions. It says, let nothing move you. My friends watching today, there are so many distractions out there. There are so many things that could get your focus off and get your eyes turning the, the opposite way. And the enemy will just come in and, and take it. And he'll take your sunglasses. He'll take your Bible. He'll take whatever and then tell you, get out of your car. Oh, no. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> no. And he'll say, it's my car. That's, why, that's where the... The phrase I like to say comes from where it says you, if you let the devil ride with you, well, he'll want to drive. He and then when he drives, guess what? He's kicking you out your car. Well, it's time we give him the boot today. Concerning your finances, this is what we're talking about right now. It's the offering. Hello, it's offering time on the 11th hour. You've got to give the devil the boot a lot of you went into some kind of depression and panic yesterday during tax day. When somebody says, happy tax day, ain't nothing happy about tax day. Everybody's miserable on tax day. There's nobody, I don't know if I've ever actually met anybody happy on tax day. But you, and the devil gets you, why? Because he gets you in fear. He gets you in fear of, well, well there went all my money. There went all my money. No. No, that's not. Do you not believe that God can, can still prosper you beyond tax day? My friends, God has more wealth than the tip of his pinky finger than the richest person on this planet. There are sheiks in this world that look poor next to God just next to his hand. That's how much wealth, and it's true wealth. 
It's true. And it's, it's true prosperity. He is prosperity. And so if we are a believer, and we are a believer in the Most High God, there is no Most or High. He is the Most High. As my dad says, when he looks up, there's nothing there. He is the highest of them all. He is the one true God. And if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, you just said that prayer that he, he led you in, then you are a child of the most or high. He is the most, what well, Jeremy would say, the most or high of the mostest of the most. He is the God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac the God of Jacob, and you are his children. And so today it's time to say concerning your finances to the devil, I take back my stuff, I take it back, and it's mine forever. And you get out of the car and go to the sliding frog pool. And I will snap my fingers and you will be a chicken. And you will be a chicken. I'm telling you, it's to, but that's how, that's the way the devil talks. I'll snap my fingers and you'll be a chicken. And Christians go, oh God, he's going to turn me into a chicken. Are you crazy? Somebody told me one time after I gave my testimony, said, we're, we're rejoicing with you, Krista, but don't tempt the devil. Really? Don't tempt the devil. We know that he could come back. Yeah, come back, buddy. I'm ready. <laughs> Boom. I will snap my fingers and you will be a chicken. No, I, I ain't scared of him and you shouldn't be either. He's nothing to be afraid of. He's afraid of himself. He oozes with fear. He actually, he does. He oozes with fear that when he looks in the mirror, he scares himself. And that is where, that's how we have to begin. He does. He's afraid of himself. And that's the way we have to start seeing him. He's really that pathetic. And you have got a job to do, and we've got to win this thing, my friends. We've got to win this thing. And just like this Bible says, stand firm and let nothing move you in all aspects of your life, spirit, soul, and body. And let's do this thing. Let's be champions. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, I just wanted to make fun of the devil for a little bit. That's just kind of what I got up here and wanted to do is just make fun of him. You know, because why? Because he deserves it. He does. He's made fun of us long enough. Now it's time that we start fighting back, but this time we fight to win. We fight the good fight of faith, and that's a fight that you win. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, the way we do that is with the Word of God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's this book right here. And this is what we fight with. And the Scripture concerning... Your finances that we fight with is Luke 6, 38. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You say, I believe it, I receive it, and I call it done in Jesus' name. Now for the tither, this is what we fight with. Malachi three ten says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may, may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer. See, that's that. I will snap my fingers and you will be a chicken. And leave them alone. You know, I, I'm just going to pause right here. I got chickens at my house, and they run wild. Sometimes they'll be on the porch. Sometimes they're out by the pool. It just, they do what they want. They're everywhere. But if I walk up to them, they just start making all kinds of noise and run as fast as they possibly can away from me. <laughs> that, they do. They just start talking and making noise, and they literally run away. I don't know where they go, but they run away from me. That should be you with the devil. 
Every time you walk up near him, he just starts babbling and making noise and runs away. And that's God when he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He does it for you. Amen? I'm not getting in. I'm, I'm preaching better than you are responding. But that's okay. I'm going to go back and watch this myself. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, stand firm and let nothing move you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, today has been a, a different day, hasn't it, on the 11th hour? It's kind of different, um, but of course every 11th hour is different. But today we've, we've been prophesying and talking about stuff between the lines, uh, between time, uh, the times that are, the times that were, and the times that are happening right this moment. But we're, we've been prophesying between the lines today. And talking about things that's not just so easily seen. You know, um, you, you should be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You really need that right now. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You, you need that, that explosive power of the Spirit uh, that's down in you, coming up on you, anointing you for service. You need that fire. The, Jesus said you would be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Uh, remember John said he's coming, he'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus said go uh, tarry in the upper room until you be endued with power from on high. And that day, uh, the day that happened, then the sound of a rushing mighty wind came in that upper room and tongues of fire set down upon each one of them. So today, if you'll just ask the Lord, say, Lord Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say, and you'll mean that, then he'll do that. And right now, the Holy Ghost that lives in you that, got, that you got saved with will now come upon you. So just start thanking him now. And now whatever sounds you hear, release out of your mouth. Otopa, cliché. Brindo kun zelefa tele, a repa kurizia kostongle ziam bandrete, a preto kusa shokenglete. Just start saying whatever you hear and let it come out of your mouth, and you're speaking mysteries hidden in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I wanted to, uh, I didn't know that I was going to do this today, but I want to go ahead and, and give you a heads up. There's a new book coming out. And uh, it's not released today, but it's coming out. And um, it's, it's going to be in the Spiritual Warfare series. There's the pool and the portal that came out. And this one that's coming out now is the next in that line. So you want to be, uh, keep a heads up for that. Um, I think I know when we're going to release it, but, but we don't tell the enemy when it's coming out. Hallelujah. I think everything's in place now for it. And so we're going to have to be bold in these times. We're going to have to be bold and, and, and just start putting things out there to let people know God is still here. God is still here. He's still moving and he's still here. Hallelujah. You can write the ministry and inquire about it. I don't know if it's even at the, the place yet where you can order it, but if it was, I'd just turn it loose. Hallelujah. So you want to, um, you want to keep a heads up for that. Now, now the enemy's scared of that. He don't know what's going to happen with that now. And, um, but it's been a while coming. It's finished, and it's in print now. And so uh, I want you to be looking for it. Some of you in, that know the pool and the portal will recognize chapter 14. And chapter 14 is the new one that's coming out now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody knew I was going to say that today. 
And so, I mean, everybody's shaking their head no. But I was standing here, it was like the Lord said, tell them about that book. <laughs> tell them about it. So I did. And um, hallelujah, it's going to be good. Praise God. Well, it's been a good time today on the 11th hour. We've, we've heard prophecy. We've learned something about prophecy. God has called people back into uh, things that he called them to. He's given prophetic words concerning world leaders. Uh, he told about the blueprint of, and the fabric of creation and so forth. That's in the fabric of creation is the prophetic word. Revelation is a prophetic breath given for you to speak. So when you get a revelation from God, speak it out, and it draws a blueprint for something God wants done. And if you'll hold fast to that confession, it will come to pass. Amen. And so we, we've learned about how to prosper. We've learned about religion and how it tries to stifle you and keep you into a place of deception. And um, so it's been a good day. It has been a good day. Well, until next time we gather together right here around God's Word, I want you to remember and never forget that God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom.